All right, so this is the 1989 Saab 900 SPG that will be listed for sale on Bring a Trailer. Um, the first thing that you have to know about this car, if you are going to bid on it, is that it does have a rebuilt title. Uh, what I was told by the previous owner is that uh, back in 1998, a tree branch fell on the hood and this front section right here. Uh, and these were worth so little back then that that was enough for the insurance company to total the car. Um, so if you look here at the hood, you'll notice that it was originally red and it was resprayed black to match this car uh, following that incident. So I will just show you that right now. See, we have uh, evidence of a red hood there and a red hood there, a little bit of surface rust in the front nothing too bad um, there's also some evidence of red here on this panel uh, right in front of the windshield uh, this this car has 105,000 miles on it uh, which is extremely low mileage for a 1989 Saab these were typically daily drivers so to see one with such low miles is, is pretty rare I bought this car about six months ago at 104,000 miles when I bought it, it had essentially been stored for five years. So the work that I've done over the past four months or so uh, really has just been refreshing the car and getting it back into, into confident driving condition. So some of that work has included changing the uh, engine oil. So you can see there, nice and golden. Uh, there's no uh, evidence of contamination or, or a bad head gasket or anything like that. Uh, the filter is also changed, uh, of course, with the with the engine oil. Um, the other work that I did recently, I will post a time lapse video of me doing it as well to verify, is um, I replaced all the spark plugs here, replaced the spark plug wires, replaced the distributor cap, cleaned the rotor, uh, replaced the distributor seal uh, because that was leaking pretty badly. Uh, and this no longer leaks, so that works great. Starts right up. Um, I just posted a cold start video as well as a, a more detailed walk around, so definitely check that out. Um, I also want to say that this is my second SPG. So the first one I had was a 1991 barrel green. Um, on that car, I had this JTEX Scandex. Um, Simmons, they're all the same, but they're made by different manufacturers. Two and a half inch exhaust. It goes all the way from the turbo to the back. Uh, it's, it's kind of famous for the shotgun tips. It's two and a half inches all the way through, and it really helps the car breathe a little bit better. The other thing I brought over from the previous SPG is the 16 inch aero wheels. Um, these were actually stock for Saab 9000 arrows not um, 900 SPGs. 900 SPGs would have had 15 inch three spoke wheels. I think the 16 inches just make the car feel a little bit better, uh, handle a little bit better and look better too. Um, so this car is a great driving condition car. It's not a show car, please do not bid on it if you are expecting a show car. Um, there are a couple flaws with it. I will walk through those right now. And I want to make sure that whoever is bidding on this car is, is fully aware of those flaws. So the first thing is that these tires uh, I had mounted on the 16 inch arrows. Um, the date stamp on these is 2017, so they're still good. And as you can see, the, the tread is very full. Um, the, I would get these remounted and balanced because when I had these mounted on the rims, these are directional tires. Um, it matters which way inside and out they are. One or two of these wheels were mounted the wrong way. The tire shop didn't pay attention to the directional, they just mounted them. And because of that, uh, the tread is backwards on, on one or two tires. Now, I haven't put enough miles on this car for that to really matter. If I was gonna drive it quite a bit, I would definitely want to get that switched. But for the few miles that I've put on it in my ownership, uh, it's been fine the way it is. The hood I already covered, um, resprayed hood due to the tree limb accident. This panel I believe is also replaced because there's a little bit of red right there. 
Another small thing is one of these is brass instead of uh, the regular black. Not a big thing, but if it matters to you, definitely replace that. I actually haven't cleaned this engine at all. Um, when I was taking pictures, I didn't want to clean this car too well because I wanted to show it as a driver. I didn't want to um, fool anybody into thinking it's a show car because it really isn't. The paint overall is in good condition. It isn't great. There are some chips on the hood. Um, a lot of this is actually watermarks from, from it raining yesterday. Uh, nothing too bad, but again, some chips on the hood. So could probably be corrected, but just uh, keep note of that. All right, I'm gonna close this up. Oh, let me get my notepad over here to keep track and make sure that I remember everything. Uh, another item to note is that the emblems here on the trunk and on the steering wheel, they are faded. Um, you can certainly get them replaced, but uh, it never bothered me enough to replace them. Again, it's a driver's car. So Saab 900 SPGs also had special fog lights that came with them. This car doesn't have them on. When I bought it, it had these really cheap um, aftermarket fog lights on it that I took off. I was able to track down some original Saab 900 SPG fog lights. I actually like the look without the fog lights a little bit better, so I have them. I'll include them in the sale, but I didn't install them. Uh, I will say too that when I got the car, the fog lights did work. I just removed them. So uh, the wiring and everything that goes to the front of the car is, is all set. Next thing to note that isn't perfect on this is these markers. These markers should be amber. Previous owner replaced them with black. The, uh, the blinker unit inside still does work and they still do project. Um, again, another item that never really bothered me. I kind of like the look. I do have the amber ones still and I'll include those in the sale if you want to switch those out. Next thing to note is that this panel right here is slightly warped. All the other ones are flush. This one warped a little bit. So as you can see, it's it's a little bit away from the door, not at the point where it's gonna risk coming off or anything like that, uh, but please take note. There's a, a piece missing out of this weather stripping here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. I think it just broke off. Pretty common for a car of this age. So moving inside, some of the work that I did was in the interior. Uh, these panels have been recovered with this gray kind of Alcantara like fabric. Um, it was recovered by me. I'm not a professional uh, upholsterer or anything like that. So they show pretty well, but they're not perfect. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of a crease there and a little bit of a crease there. Again, the emblem on the steering wheel, which I mentioned, uh, it's, it's faded out. Um, you can probably get that replaced. The seats were pretty dry when I got this. Um, they're overall in decent condition. This section here is a little bit worn and there's a small tear right there and somewhere over here. I'm confident that uh, if, if you just keep moisturizing these seats and um, you know are really careful getting in and out and making sure that they're not gonna dry out again, they'll be fine. Um, there's supposed to be a little plastic piece right here that goes on uh, this lever to put the seat forward came off at some point. It was like it when I bought this. Um, you can probably get another one somewhere, but please take note. Uh, let's see what else. So for 1989, this car would have had passive seat belts, uh, also known as like the mousetrap style seat belts. Those were in the car when I bought this. They didn't work. So, and, and sourcing parts for that is very, very difficult. So what I did is I removed them and I installed the standard three point belts out of a 1987 uh, 900. So um, the three points were used on the earlier Saab 900s. They were used on the later ones as well. It's pretty common for people to, to replace these. So replacing the seat belts um, requires the installation of this grab handle. So this is also out of the 87 and it requires a new headliner. 
So this headliner is out of the same car. I recovered it myself, recovered it in this black fabric. Normally it would have been tan, but I actually like the look at the black. I think it goes well with a black SPG. Looks a little bit sportier, so I decided to keep it. When I recovered the headliner, I chose not to recover the sunroof. I think the black paint on the sunroof also matches the black headliner really well. Um, it's pretty easy to recover these. You just take the whole unit out and then uh, put the fabric on. But I like the look of this, so I kept it like this. You can see our sun visors here work well. Um, the dash is cracked, so that's uh, another piece on this car that isn't perfect. It's extremely difficult to find cars um, of this vintage that don't have the dashes cracked. This one actually isn't too bad compared to a lot of the ones that I've seen, but again, it is cracked. This is a driver, not a show car. Odometer reads 105,000 miles. Like I said, I bought it at about 104. Uh, I put about 1,000 miles on it. It's been really good to me. It pulls really hard uh, and handles great. Please take a look at the underside photos. Um, you'll see that this car actually came from Pennsylvania, um, but it's extremely clean underneath. I don't believe that was ever driven in the, uh, the salty roads. A few more things to note about this car that make it really cool is, um, one, it has the original Saab radio and the original Saab equalizer that goes with the radio. These do work along with the power antenna, which is a very cool uh, 80s thing. The other cool thing that I absolutely love is that this car came with the special dealer option Saab VDO gauges. So these gauges are made by VDO. They are branded Saab. Uh, you have your voltmeter, your oil pressure, and your outside temperature. The outside temperature only works when you're moving. Um, when you're sitting idling, it tends to pick up the latent heat from the engine and, and uh, it, leads, it reads a little bit warmer. But they all do work uh, and they're extremely difficult to find. So it's cool that this car still has them. Looking around here, I'll have to check my notes too to make sure I, I got everything. Um, one other thing that's awesome is that this car has the original optioned rubber floor mats. This was another piece that I pulled from my other SPG. Uh, I love these floor mats. I think they look great. This one's been trimmed a little bit to accommodate the clutch pedal. Um, take note of that, but this is another cool option that's really hard to find. All right, looking around, another dealer option that this has is the uh, lip for the sunroof. It matches this really well. Um, I don't think it's ever been removed, actually. It looks really, really good. Moving around the car, um, one thing to take note of that isn't perfect is that this uh, taillight lens has a couple cracks in it. it. It stays in there fine. It's nothing too bad. But again, it is cracked just a little bit, so please take note of that. Here we have the uh, two and a half inch exhaust that I talked about a little bit earlier. In my walk around, I also started it up and let you listen to it. It sounds really good. Um, again, here's the Saab badge on the rear. It's, it's clearly worn, uh, so take note of that if that's something that bothers you. These bumpers look pretty good. They do have some, uh, some weathering in them. Nothing too bad um, for a driver, but they are weathered. You could re repaint them if you would like. Uh, it never bothered me enough to do so. Next thing about this car is that I, this is the original tail that would go on it. You can see that it's branded Saab. Um, I do have an aftermarket fiberglass whale tail that was on my other SPG. It does have some damage on it and it's currently painted green, but I'll include that in the sale if the, the owner wants to convert this to a whale tail. Looks really good with the 16 inch aero wheels. So moving down here to the gas cap, um, all SPGs had this premium unleaded fuel only sticker. Um, normal 900 turbos would have just been marked unleaded fuel only. You can see this one's pretty worn, but it is there. Um, 
gas cap looks okay. There's a small crack right there. Take note of that. This, this piece is solid, um, nothing to worry about. Just finish walking around here and I will uh, check my notes to make sure that there isn't anything else that I'm missing. Um, I did replace the air filter in this car as well. I know that's really easy to do, but uh, it's something that, that made it drive a lot better and really helped the tune up. Let's see, uh, I did replace the transmission oil in this car as well. Uh, these 900 turbos notoriously have a, a weak transmission. Um, a lot of times they will pop out of first or they'll pop out of, pop out of reverse. This one doesn't do that. Uh, it, it shifts really nicely. Um, it doesn't pop out of any gear or anything like that. It's really, really, really important that you take care of these transmissions. Uh, so replacing the transmission oil was something I did before I even drove the car. Let me just check my notes here to make sure I covered everything. Oh, another thing that I replaced uh, just recently is the gas struts on the trunk support. So, uh, of course, it's another easy thing to do, but just helps the trunk stay up. Um, both of those were blown when I bought the car. So the rear parcel shelf here has been recovered in a, a gray fabric that pretty much matches the trunk. Uh, this came out really well. Take note that these panels over here are pretty sun faded. They're not ripped or anything like that, so I chose to leave them in place. Um, of course, when you're driving the car, you don't even see them, but they are sun faded, so uh, please take note. In here, oh, and another thing to note is that the rear speakers are not hooked up. I believe there's an equalizer or something like that in the back. Um, that was pulled out before I bought the car. The front speakers work and that was enough for me, so I never actually uh, hooked the rear ones up. It might be good to replace the rear speakers if, uh, if you do wanna hook them up just to make sure that you got good quality sound coming out. In here, classic spare tire, um, a little tool kit right here. Has pretty much everything, looks like we're missing just the Allen wrench that goes there. Looks like we're just missing a pair of uh, channel vices. Close this back up. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Um, I'll check my list to make sure that I don't have anything else that I'm missing. I think I got everything that I replaced. Uh, oh, another thing to note is that um, on the radio, the radio does work. I did stick a cassette tape into it and it wasn't able to play the cassette tape. Uh, so I've only used the radio. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that. It could honestly be the cassette that I put in, but um, just act as if the cassette player doesn't work. Yeah, so, so that's really it. Um, this car is in, in great shape for a driver. Uh, like I said, I, I bought it and really just refreshed it for the next owner. Um, a lot of the fun in these cars is, is working on them for me. So now that this one's done, I'm, I'm ready to move on to the next project. Um, it's a great driver's car. It gets compliments every single time I take it out. It really, really looks good, um, but it's not a show car. So please bid on this car as if uh, you wanted to buy it to drive it. Don't bid on it to put it in a showroom. Thank you so much.